Hi, welcome to Detailing World. In today's video, we're going to be doing a quick garage tour. Hi, so welcome back. If this is your first time here, my name's Matt. And as I said, we're going to be taking a quick look around the garage today. Um, with the poor weather that we're having, it's kind of hit me that I've never actually shown you guys how things are set up in here. So yeah, earlier in the year, those who have been subscribed to the channel for some time may remember I did a couple of vlog episodes, which I'll put a link to up here where I kind of emptied this garage. You know, I've been here for six and a half years now. At the time, it was about six years I'd been here. Um, I stripped out the old shelf units that were there and just had a good old sort out and a good tidy up. So I'm hoping with the poor weather that's coming and it's only going to get worse, this video is going to give you guys some ideas and a bit of inspiration on what to do with your garages. So one of the comments that I do see a lot in some of the videos is how people appreciate the fact that I'm able to do these kind of videos that I do and some of the details that I do. From the comfort of my driveway, and I know a lot of the viewers are weekend warriors, driveway detailers, whatever it is you want to call yourself, and we don't all have access to a nice big garage or a nice dedicated studio. Some of us don't even have garages, so as you can tell here, this is a prefab garage, a concrete prefab with a concrete sheet roof. Some of you may have brick garages, but you know, normally a lot of us have only got single garages. It may only be a shed, and when I was at the parents, it was a bike shed. So as I said, this video, I'm hoping it's going to give you guys some ideas, a bit of inspiration as well to get out there in these cold winter months, sort out your garage and make things easier for when we get into the spring as well. And in fact, over the winter months, when you just need to grab a product and just do a bit of localised cleaning or something like that. So yeah, we'll dive right into this. Oh, but before we do, if you do enjoy this video, make sure you smash that like button. And if you're not subscribed already, please do consider subscribing as well. It really does help us out. And yeah, we'll get into this now then. Okay, so looking into the garage then from the entrance, this is my view, what you see now. And on the left-hand side here, this is where I keep all of the maintenance products, basically. So I've got the wheel cleaners, shampoos, brushes, hose pipe, pressure washer, buckets, everything for a regular detail session. I can just come in, grab what I need, get back out there. At the back, we've got a small workbench just for mixing products on, storing boxes, things like that. And then in this corner, we've got the review shelf, we've got the polishing shelves, gallon bottles of product down there, and a couple of storage boxes for microfibers. And then we have a table just on this side here, which is a place where I'll do my Instagram live videos. I'll shoot B-roll against that wall um, and all sorts of stuff like that. And then in this corner here, is the bit you never really see, but it's the place we're gonna start first, so let's take a look over here. Okay, so I'm sure every garage has a corner like this in one way or another, so we'll just start over there. That is a few bags of rock salt for come winter time, um, an open bag of rock salt in the bag for life, can of petrol next to that. Uh, we've got a gas heater here. This is for basically warming things up when I'm in here a long time shooting B-roll, do my Instagram lives on a Friday night, um, or for wheeling into the house when we have the new radiators fitted in a few weeks. Hung up on the wall there, we've got the strimmer for strimming, and here we've got a lawnmower for lawnmowering. And then back here, we've got an old double glazing piece of glass, and that's just some product testing that I need to do for cleaners and glass sealants and things of that nature. And then again, a bonnet at the back, which you've seen before in the how to hand polish videos and a few more videos I've got coming up. So yeah, that's this corner done with. Um, so we'll take a quick look at the shelves and see how things are organized. Okay, so moving on to the sort of maintenance side of the garage, if that's what we're calling it. We basically got these two six foot long shelves. It's just a bit of plywood coated in Danish oil to basically try and repel any water, any moisture, chemicals that may leak onto these. And these are just held up by these adjustable brackets. And there's three of these holding these up along the six foot span and there's no sagging or anything like that. So along this top shelf here, these are products that are kind of like need diluting, the, but they're in small bottles. So we've got like a citrus wash here from Easy Car Care. We've got Dodo Juice Mellow Yellow, uh, Poor Boys Bug Squash, and then small sample size bottles as well that I've had sent to me over the years. So we've got, you know, Power Max there and a bunch of other things. So towards the back, you've got like Law Mower Oil and WD-40. Things that need to be kept in a garage that just needs to be kept out of the way as well. So yeah, moving on to the main product shelf here then. Uh, the thought process here is working left to right. This is how we typically clean the car. So on the left hand side, the closest to the garage door, we've got a dedicated wheel cleaner. And then next to that, we would have the selection of snow foams that I've got on the shelf. 
And then of course, the next stage after the snow foaming would be shampoo, will be wash stage. So we've got the shampoos there. Moving on from the shampoos, it's then on to decontamination. So here we have tar removers, we've then got iron removers, and here's a couple of clay lubes. It's marked up as quick detailers, but these are clay lubes here. Uh, the clay's on the other side. So this little section here is more the decontamination section. So next up, we've then got the all-purpose cleaner. Now this sits pretty much in the middle of the shelf. I've got a bottle of four to one and a bottle of 10 to one mixed up ready over here. I've also got bottles of pump sprayers back there. Um, now the all-purpose cleaner, depending who you are and what you're thinking is, you could pull that anywhere along this range, but I've put this in the middle for one reason, and that is to separate the cleaning and decon products away from the sort of last stage products or the finishing work that I tend to do um, towards the end of a detail. So yeah, speaking of the last stage products then, we would then be moving on to glass cleaners here, followed by quick detailers here for that final wipe down. Um, I must mention Dodo Juice Red Mist Tropical. Anytime I see that, I have to sniff it. It is one of my favorite smelling products ever. Here we've then got a spray on glass coat from Detail Online. I probably should have my bottle of Rain-X there as well, but that's just a bit back there. And then we've got a couple of sort of spray waxes, spray sealants, you know, sort of spray protection products sit here. Finally, we get onto some of the last products, which is the rubber trim tire dressing. So we've got a very original bottle of Chemical Guy Silk Shine dressing there. Detailed Online's tire dressing at the back. This little bundle here is a random mix of products. So we've got like Dodo Juice Time to Dry. We have a Detailed Online Air Freshener. Zymol leather cleaners back there. There's a Zyno leather cleaner as well. Um, up top is some metal cleaners just here because they just didn't have chance to fit here. Um, and then we've got bottles of like Wonder White for stains and spillages in the garage more than anything, but they can still be used on cars. Oh, up here as well on the top, we do have um, a bottle of Sequartz ceramic just up there and Sequartz reload up the top as well. And a couple of bottles of Bright Max metal sealant and polish. So yeah, there we have it then. That's the sort of maintenance and the wash products there on this side. The logic, as I say, is working from left to right. I know I can just come in. I know exactly where that product is. If I've got somebody helping me out or if I'm, you know, for example, doing Dan's car next door, I can tell him to come into the garage. It can find what he needs. As I say, it's all done in order of how I would work a car. So as I say, wheels, snow foam, shampoo, decon, and then sort of like the finishing products to the end. The brushes are a similar format as well. We'll have a look at them in a moment. First, I just want to mention, if you are looking for some garage storage solutions, you may want to take a quick look at the poker range uh, from Clean and Shiny. They offer a lot of products um, for bottle storage, brush, brush storage, um, something a bit more elegant than this whole shelf system here. Now this works for me, um, but I've had to make do with it being a prefab garage. I am hoping one day to upgrade to a brick garage, mainly for sort of insulation and somewhere I can leave video equipment set up full time. So yeah, if you're in a brick garage or if you've got a shed where you can drill into the walls quite easy, take a look at the Poker Premium Equipment range. As I said, they've got a few tray holders with about a metre long, 80 centimetres long, and you can pour about 10 bottles in that, store your brushes. But yeah, um, we'll go on to my mod for storing brushes. Okay, so as you can see, this is my Bodge Job DIY brush hanging solution. Um, I might have to trademark this so no one copies it. As I said, take a look at the poker premium equipment from Clean and Shine if you want a bit more of a premium look rather than something like this. But this is the best I could do. I can't drill into these walls. Um, so again, if you're in a prefab garage, this gives you ideas. So the idea was to basically I make use of the underside here. So on the little piece of decking I've got mounted to the wall, I put a couple of screws in to hold up the foam lamps first of all. And this you'll see is a common theme, putting screws into mount things. And then a bunch of screws into a little piece of wood along here. So here we've got the Meguiar's hog hair brush, a couple of generic sort of eBay, Amazon cheap brushes here. These two sort of chunkier brushes, they're for wheels, and these three are for the exterior. We then move on to the work stuff brushes. So the white one is an interior brush. The black one is for wheels, it's chemical resistant brush. The smaller one will be an interior, and this chunkier one is a chunky exterior brush. And then moving further along, we've got some unused decorators brushes that come in part of a set. Now all I did here, they've got metal ferrules, put a bit of blue tape on, and these are great for getting into crevices down the sides of seats. So they're just used for interior. So they're not the perfect brush, but for just brushing a bit of, you know, dust and whatnot from down the side of your seats, 
they're perfect and a little pet hairbrush. Okay, so we'll just bring you a bit further down then. We can see these brushes at the back here. Now these are all wheel brushes and I've tried grouping them in sort of like kinds of brushes. So these are your bristle brushes. We've got the easy detail brush there. By far my favorite of that type of brush. Generic yellow brush there and the Viken wheel brush as well, which is great for multi-spoke alloys. Here we then have a selection of the wheel woolies or cheap wheel woolly brushes here. Um, they're what get used on the Nissan all the time, just with it being gloss paint. And here we have a cheap dip wash brush from Kent, I believe it was. And that's just used for the arches. And then finally getting towards the end of all these brushes and whatnot, we have a couple more screws in here to hold up the lances. So we've got the underbody wheel arch lance there and the bog standard, you know, Karcher wash lance there. We've got a couple of brushes here from Tenzis. These are wooden ones. In fact, that one looks like it's getting a bit of mold or something on that. I think it's getting a bit damp in here, but these are massive sort of 12 inch long brushes. I've not yet used these ones. Um, again, I'll be taping up these ferrules here. That has already, in fact, gone a bit moldy and manky on the end there. Anyway, I'll have to give that a good clean and see what the crack is. And another sort of decorating brush that I've not yet used, probably will get used in an engine bay and an old foam lance back here. We're nearly done on this side before we move along to the back wall. Okay then, so down here is much the same as everything else. You'll see the regular theme, left to right, closest to the door that way. I need to grab my hose pipe first, so that's here, put away nice and neat. We've then got the pressure washer, so I can just come in, grab the pressure washer, hose is already wrapped around the back, take that out and connect it up. We've then got the stack of buckets, so the very bottom bucket here, that is actually cracked and it's just there to add a bit of height and sit things on now and again. We've got the wash and rinse bucket inside each other there, the wash bucket always sits inside the rinse bucket. And then we've got the wheel bucket on top, again as with everything else, it's the first thing I do, so it's the first bucket I need. So. Yeah, that's this section done and as you can see everything is about logic and trying to be as efficient as possible when I am getting out there cleaning the car so we'll take a quick look at this back wall. Right, so moving on from the buckets, before I forget we've got the two drawers here and we'll just take a quick look in those. So this top drawer here, this is the wax drawer basically, so back here we've got a tub of Zymol Glacier, we've got the Dodo Juice Limited Edition Ostentatious and the Dodo Juice Supernatural uh, wooden tub version. I believe this little pot is Swiss Vax Best of Show. It's a little sample I had. And we've got a bunch of cheap applicator pads at the back there. Down here, some of the waxes that I've either purchased or have been sent for review this year. So we've got the Detailed Online Ultima. Purchased that one. Uh, we've got Easy Car Care Ceramic Wax and a large tub there. And also Detailed Online Surreals Wax. In the next drawer down, this is basically the equivalent of a detailer's junk drawer. So in here, we've got a couple of interior brushes. This one's probably ready for replacing. Uh, we then have the syringe and the little tube just to do accurate measurements when I'm reviewing products as well. A microfiber in a bag for some reason, I'm not quite sure why. Uh, another box of nitrile gloves. For some reason, an old wheel brush. Don't know why that's in there. These really tiny Viken brushes that I've not used for many years. Uh, so yeah, that's that drawer. Oh, and a screwdriver for opening tins of paint, if I remember rightly. So yeah, that's the equivalent of the detailer's junk drawer. Right, so that's the left side gone through then, and the wash maintenance section. Onto the back bench here. This is where I basically get everything ready for reviewing, mixing snow foams, diluting chemicals down. I've got the Stiano Gloss range on the back at the moment. That simply sat there from the last B-roll and video that I shot. Back over here in this corner, we've just got a couple of snow foams. So again, we've got the Stiano Gloss snow mixed in there from the last review. Pretty much always got a bottle of Auto Smart Ultra Mousse or the Detailed Online snow foam mix up as well. That's the auto smart in that bottle, by the way. The detailed online had to get decanted and that is in a small jug here. So we've got a measuring jug, again, for mixing up products and a larger measuring jug. And then some blue roll for spillages. So moving on to this lovely pink storage box here that I acquired from the missus. Sitting on the top, box of nitrile gloves for cleaning wheels and doing exhaust and dirty work. 
This whole stack really doesn't get used all that often. So in the top here is a few applicator pads. So generic sponge applicators, German. We've got split applicator pads in here. So that's a used one. We've got these cheap ones as well. Uh, again, used, unused. So these are like 90p for two from Wilco. So handy for product testing and whatnot. The next drawdown then, this has just got a few polishing items and random bits and bobs. So we've got backing plates here the, for the rotary, uh, seal skin waterproof warm gloves, uh, some wet and dry paper there. We've got a few rolls of blue tape, some cotton wool pad as well in there. And then moving into the bottom drawer, this is kind of like, I guess, a ceramic drawer. It doesn't really get used that much. So we've got some orange natural gloves. We've got some suede microfiber cloths, um, an applicator block as well from CarPro uh, for applying ceramic products basically. So yeah, that's that little corner there. So yeah, moving along to under the workbench then, we've got what looks like an old kitchen unit or something. It probably is, it was already here when we got the house. Um, so along here is just things such as a couple of towels for drying your hands, mopping up spillages. Wonder wipes again for cleaning up spills, stains, and all of that junk. We've got a torque wrench back here for putting wheels back on, and this box here is just full of old bottles and um, spare spray heads, but they're the cheap, nasty kind of spray heads like that. We've got a few old like bed sheets and curtains for covering that window back there. So this is like for blanking out window and light for when I'm doing my B-roll, I can control all the lighting. On this side over here, uh, we've got a box here full of drying towels and that is full. I'll quickly get this out. So we'll take a quick look in this box. We've got your generic blue one there. We've got a cheap gray one I've been trying out. Dodo Juice Supernatural drying towel. This yellow one came from um, Golden Bear Detail, I believe. These plush yellow ones, one of my favorite type of drying towels. These ones, um, and then towards the bottom are some like wheel towels. I do need to sort the boxes out again, really. This one here, unused, empty. So I probably need to put some drying towels in there for wheels, really. So that's the back bench. Sound a bit like politics, that. So that's the back bench. Um, yeah, nothing much exciting to see here. So we'll move into this corner next. So moving around into the corner a bit then, we've got the review shelf here. Now, usually what happens is I'll receive a box full of products or maybe just one or two products. I'll probably do an unboxing on uh, Instagram Live on a Friday night. And then they find their way onto this shelf somewhere. Now, this shelf unit, if you're interested, I got this off Amazon for 10, 15 pounds, something like that. Not overly expensive and it does hold quite a lot of weight as well. Um, I filled it instantly. So I got it to get more space and then I quickly ran out of space. Moving over onto this side, this is essentially like the polishing corner, the five litre bottle corner down there. So we've got some hand polishers, glazers along the top, and then sort of compound products and actual polishers on this bottom shelf here. We'll take a look at that in a moment, but for now we'll uh, dive into the review shelf. So yeah, this is the review shelf then. Um, now what happens here is I'll try and group everything as they come in. And I can just quickly take a glance at this and see there's an entire range of products that I may have where I can quickly do a review whilst I'm actually cleaning the car as well. And along the top, we've got the odd products. So we've got some from Detailed Online. We've got Nano Labs, the garage therapy stuff. I've actually used that. It's still sat there though because I've not actually done the review. I've got a few products from Car Chem there. There's about six products from them. Auto Glands and Wowos. And behind the Wowos is a bottle of BSD from Sonax because I still haven't used BSD and it's like the measuring stick of all detailing products really. So moving down the shelf, we've got the whole Tenzi range here. Now this half products was sent to me originally. They have been used and reviewed. I've simply run out of space to put them over on the main shelf. So they've been sitting there for a few months. These bunch here, these still need to be reviewed. Same as the ceramic wax here. The ceramics behind them, they've actually been reviewed and they're all part of the video and I'll put them in a link below. Moving down again then, we've got Golden Bird Detail. Again, I've done the review on that. Use almost all the products, which is why they're still sat there because there's a few products I've not got around to using. Alien Magic then sent a few products out. I've used the Purple Haze, but not the others. This Auto Bright Direct bag at the back, that's just a prize that I won. I'm under no obligation to do a review. But if I can, I will, and I will get around to using it. 
And then moving down onto the bottom, we've got a few products from Polished Pigs. Apologies, guys, that you're on the bottom. I had basically empty space. It was the only place I could put you. But we'll put, give you a free plug. So I've got a shampoo from Polished Pigs and a wheel cleaner from them. So I've got a few products down there to use from them. Um, and a couple of boxes full of old applicator pads. I have no idea why I keep old stuff. Anyway, that's that. We'll just scoot around and take a look on this bit here. So we've got the work lights for, well, machine work. Move them out of the way. And then along the bottom here, we've got several pump sprayers. So that's a four to one all purpose cleaner. Another all purpose cleaner in there. And another all purpose cleaner there. On the floor down here, Snow Foam Pro from AutoSmart that was reviewed recently also. And a bottle of panel wipe just down here. Got a socket set on the floor, big 100 piece Halfords kit thing. Uh, what else have we got? On the very bottom shelf, we've got trolley jack down there. We've got a Dremel kit back there. Uh, screen wash and things like that. Things I don't need to get to all the time. And a very old silver line rotary machine there as an absolute emergency backup machine. This shelf here, as you can see, it's pretty much all auto smart. So we've got TARDIS, we've got glass cleaner, ultra mousse, and another bottle of ultra mousse back there. Surfex HD at the back there, high style G101 and auto smart trim orchard back over there. And a couple of extension leads there as well because I was running out of place to put them at the time. So let me get up off this cold floor and uh, move up a bit. Okay, so onto the final bunch of products then. Top of this old metal shelving rack here, we've got a bag with my rotary polisher in. That is a Kestrel Sim 180. Then got a small halogen work light there. And back here we have the Meguiar's G220 um, dual action machine polisher. So these shelves here, uh, as I said earlier, these are kind of like all-in-ones, paint cleansers and glazers. I don't use a lot of these products because I tend to like to do a correction, um, but they do have the uses and obviously I get to review a lot of these. So we have the detailed online total up here, the very famous and yeah, everyone knows this, Auto Glimpse Super Resin Polish there, the old version that is, it's not got the gradient in the logo. Couple of Bright Max number four glazers, a bottle of water is always kept up here, bottle of IPA, we've got some clay bars here. I think that, that is my first ever clay bar, it's the Built Hamber Auto Clay. Pretty much everyone's first ever clay bar. A couple of inspection lights, um, a couple of Brinkman torches as well, amazing things then. So yeah, that's the top shelf. On the next shelf down, just like everything else, there's a bit of logic here. So here the idea is I work from the least aggressive polish to the most aggressive. So I'll work my way along and figure out which combo I need. They're also grouped by brands. So I've got the 3M. I've, I've used it for a long time. It's what I'm familiar with. It's what I know. It's what I'm comfortable with. So we've got the Ultrafina at the front, the Extra Fine Plus, and then the Fast Cut there. Then we've got the Menzerna range here. So we've got the 3M. That should be over there, actually, the 3M. We've got the Menzerna range here, so we've got the 302, the 106FA, 85RE. Moving across that way, they're very old products. I have not used them for a long time. They may have well even gone off. Um, I'll have to see. Over here, uh, we've then got the Sonax Profiline range, the EX0406, and the Cut and Finish. Um, some more clay lube over here instead of over there for some reason. So we've got the Born Slippy from Dodo Juice and a few 3M and Ferrecla products back there. So yeah, that's the little polishing corner then. There's not a massive amount of products, um, but it's enough what I need to say. I'm very comfortable with the 3M. It's what I've used for many years. Um, but if you want to send me anything else, try and test. By all means do so. Um, it can find a place on its shelf here. So we're about 95% done. Let's move on to probably the final stage. Okay, so moving on to the final area then, we've got the drawers full of mitts, towels, and pads. So we'll start off down the bottom, let's just tilt the camera down. So down here on the left hand side, this is basically, this is the sort of refill box. So we've got a bunch of spray heads in here from various sellers. Uh, we've got a Wilco's 
rubber dub dub large microfiber cloth, giving that a try. My favourite wash mitt ever that I want to bring out for special occasions, the Dodo Juice Wookie's Fist, the Supernatural wash mitt. Um, and again, one of my favourite drying towels that I've used for many years, these Ultra Plus generic drying towels. So that's that box. And in the other box, absolutely nothing of interest to anyone. This is essentially my wash basket. So this is where all the cloths come ready to go in the laundry. So moving on to these storage boxes then. Um, I've only had these in place for a couple of months. I'm still getting used to where things are. They probably will move around a bit. And before I forget, I did pick these up for like 10, 15 pounds each. Um, I think from Wilco's or Amazon. I'll put a link to where you can get them from in the description. So starting up on the top left here, if I can get this out, uh, this is one is full of wash mitts, so we've got noodle mitts on this side for, well, basically bottom half of the cars or cars that don't require a two bucket wash, such as the van. Microfiber wash mitts, I am loving that one, the work stuff one, it's really nice and thick and a generic sort of microfiber mitt that came from, I think, Golden Bird or Tenzi Detailing. Uh, the Merino wool wash mitts, I used to love using wool wash mitts, but ever since... Um, Work stuff sent me this one. I've switched to basically microfiber wash mitts. Um, so yeah, that's my wash mitt box. There's a couple more that aren't in there. Um, they're elsewhere drying off basically. So moving across, we've got a selection of microfibers here. This top drawer, if I can get it out. This is full of, basically these are used microfibers. So they're clean. They just stain, so these get used for tar removal, iron removal, maybe engine work, quite grubby jobs, and after one or two more uses, they'll probably get tossed. If we move down a touch, then we've got, again, a similar selection. These have probably been used once. So we've got these yellow microfiber cloths here. These are the Kirkland ones from Costco. Uh, the blue, similar kind of quality. I can't remember where they're from. I think I got them at the time from Polish Bliss. Also, my glass cloths are in here, so I use a tight one. So that's the mint merkin from Dodo Juice and a couple of tight weaved uh, microfibers for cleaning glass. Moving back across, sorry we're zigzagging all over. This drawer here, this has, essentially these are, I've seen people use these as drying towels. So these are like the twin sort of microfiber, really thick ones, but it's like, I think they are two microfibers sort of sewn together. I use these for wax removal and final wipe downs. Um, so there's only a couple of them in there. Um, yeah, you need them to be really nice at all times. It's not something I want to keep used products for too long. Get a, couple, a few uses out of them. Maybe demote them or just toss them. So bring it down lower again and we'll come back over here. So in here we have the selection of polishing pads. So you can tell just like the polishing products, I like my 3M range. So we've got the soft pad there, we've got right up to the hard pads. Um, so yeah, that's the selection of polishing pads. Once again, if you want to send me any polishing pads to review and change what I use, then by all means do. I do also like the um, Chemical Guys Hexlogic pads. Um, so I've got the green one there, there's a yellow one knocking about somewhere, the firmer white one, it's a bit overexposed on camera. So yeah, that's my small box of polishing pads with all these spot pads hidden away at the back. Finally, back over this way, we've got a selection of cloths from the Rag Company, free plug there, Rag Company guys. These were supplied, so they've not yet been used, so we've got a selection of colours. These came from John at Clean and Shiny. Um, so we've got like the Eagle, the Edgeless, I think, is it 365? I can't remember all of the names, I did look them up. Um, so I'll uh, link these below as well, but if you want these, Clean and Shiner is your place to go for the Rag Company microfibers, and they feel amazing. I must say that this lavender one up here, I might just put that on my pillow tonight. That's absolutely amazing. Finally, the bottom two drawers, again, just like this box here. These are refill drawers, so this one here is just full of the Kirkland microfiber cloths neatly folded. And then on this side is a bunch more products sent from various suppliers or products I've had for a few years and not used, like, again, Dodo Juice Fantastic Fur, 
We've got Fluffy from Golden Bear Detail, Gentleman from Work Stuff, uh, Shaggy from Golden Bear Detail, and more of those really nice blue ones that I shown you earlier. So yeah, that's all of those. So there we have it, that's the garage tour done with then. I hope this has basically gave you guys some ideas and inspired you to get out there in this winter weather to tidy up your garages, your man caves, your sheds, whatever it is you call it, wherever it is you keep your products. And I think the key thing really is to basically take five minutes and think how do I wash the car and then line up the products in an order that you would use them and then just try and store them in that order if you can. And same with any tools and equipment that you use as well. Especially in these winter months, you want to be doing it, you know, you, you don't want to be out in the cold too long. So you do want to be able to come in, find what you need, grab it, get back outside and take care of whatever it is you need to take care of. And it just makes it a lot less stressful. You're not having to rummage around to find where things are. One thing I've not mentioned is the flooring. So in here, it's a concrete base as is most prefab garages. I did manage to get hold of some uh, secondhand plastic floor tiles. I'll quickly show you these. So as you can see, not amazing, but they do the job for now. So if you are interested in some flooring, as I've said before, I'm looking at getting a new garage, hopefully next year or 2021, and I'll be looking at sort of like race deck or Swiss tracks. They make some decent flooring that I've seen in a few people's garages and detailing studios. And it's the grid type where water can flow out, but you've still got some grip. This stuff, because it's worn away, I am slipping on it a bit, especially with some of the moisture that gets put up in here. As I said as well, any of these storage solutions that I've used, so the shelving back there and the storage boxes, I'll put links to Amazon below for them as well. Same with some of the ideas for storing bottles. So as I said, the Poker Premium equipment from Clean and Shiny, they do bottle holders. They do a combination of bottle and brush holders, which look absolutely mint. Uh, brush holders, they do an alloy wheel stand. I think that retails at about hundred pounds. Um, but yeah, the, um, the bottle holders, they're not actually all that expensive from what I've seen. I think they're like 20 pounds for the bottle tray to sit the bottles on. If you wanted them where you can hang the spray bottles up, I think they're as low as like seven or eight pounds. But again, I'll put links to them as well in the description below. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video then. If you have, please make sure you smash that like button. And if you're not subscribed already, please do consider subscribing to the channel as well. It really does help us out. Also, make sure you check us out on Instagram as well. We're on there as Detail World Official, and I'm on there as Randomly Set. If you want to check out all the behind the scenes and all of that jazz, make sure you leave a comment below as well. I might do some more of these. I may do a video on how I film these. Um, just let us know in the comments below. Is that something you want to see? You know, talk about equipment or filming techniques. I know it's a detailing channel, but I know some of you guys would also like to try and film yourself um, doing a detail or doing a small product review. So yeah, that's a video I may do in the future. Just let us know in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video.